Well, we finally got started back to work on some of these projects. And I know, uh, you know, some of y'all might've seen the short we done on this truck we picked up at auction. So uh, we're gonna do a very quick, will it run? All right, so if you don't mind, show them when this thing was tag glass. All right, so when we got it, no steering column, um, been sitting there in a the junkyard, and it was actually sitting in a, what I would call a junkyard. So uh, everything was complete though, wasn't missing nothing except for the steering column. So we went and bought a steering column a couple, well, I guess last week, wasn't it? All right, we're going to uh, throw a battery in it and see if it'll start. And so you see, it's, so 15, that's what, eight years, nine years? Nine. Oh, nine. We're gonna see how, how this thing will start after sitting nine years. Mm -hmm. All right, show them. I mean, this is an 89 GMC. 88. What is this? Uh, Sierra. It's, it's Sierra. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna see if it's fired up. Now we did just kind of put the column in there. You know, it's totally tight. So we're gonna we'll, we'll fix that later. <laughs> and uh, so she got a a tree fitty. 700 R. I did unhook the fuel line, so I'm not cheating here, but look at that mess. Yeah, we're going to have to do some fuel system work. All right, so uh, I'm going to dump a little gas in it, and Sarah's going to try to start it, and we'll see what it does. All right. Um, <coughs> I'm going to check there. Check the Earl. See if we got any. Slightly over full, and it definitely smells bad. It's clean, so check the training fluid. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, clutch material. But what do you expect for a junkyard truck? Let's see if it's got any antifreeze in it. Mm, there's a little bit way down in there. All right, so seriously, just gonna throw some gas in it and see if it fires. All right, we're gonna throw a little bit in it and crank it and see what happens. All right, uh, go ahead and hit it and see what it does. Well, that fan is not happy. All right, let's, that was easy. Let's do it again. We'll see if we keep running a little bit longer. Okay, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Well, that's rather annoying. Hmm. hmm. Well, did you get any oil pressure? It's sixty. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to feed it, let it run a second. I'll just have to get used to the fan noise for a second, okay? Okay. All right, let me get a little bit in it, and I'll tell you when to go. Okay. All right, go ahead. Alright, go ahead. I may be putting too much in it. <laughs> you know, if it's little is good, a lot's better. Well, All right. I, I got a question. Yeah. Um, when I did the ignition, it showed check engine soon. Well, there's no telling. That might have a, a mouse party in here or it's really hard to say why it has that. Oh, you know what we did? What? I think we put the steering column in upside down. Could that be the... Oh, yeah. No, I believe we did. There's no way it could be because it's facing the right mm -hmm. way. Yeah, no, you're right. It's got it's plenty of... The the okay, yeah, it's... Yeah, the way that shift and linkage was laying, is like, I don't know about all that, but heck, I even got a bolt for that. Good deal. All right, let's try again. All right, go ahead. All right, one last time, and I'll give you all a quick update on so stuff that's been going on around here. We had a, we had a lot of stuff to do. And honestly, I had no time to film it. So, and now this is a whole nother project. 
So, all right. And you know, when you were, uh, that throttle body was actually stuck too. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, outside of the fan shroud, it actually doesn't sound good. And you said you had 60 pounds of oil pressure? Yeah, it's just stuck at 60 now. It Is goes, it, like, it, it, before it was, like, on 30, so it did, the gauge worked. Well, if you turn the ignition back on, does it come reset back down to zero? No. It doesn't? No. Okay. That may be an oil pressure gauge issue, but, well, that was a pretty uneventful, would it run? All right, so I guess we'll go show the other crap that's been going on, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be connected to that thing. But it's not. It's over here. Not over there. So we're going to put that back over there. After I get a U-joint, obviously. That's kind of weird, too. It's a, I may have to look and see if I got another drive shaft in the, in the part storage situation. Which I believe I do. All right. So we'll, we'll get rid of the, you know, the expert coat hanger exhaust pipe and you know that stuff a little bailing wire bail twine one of the worst things on the truck so and look at all that rust I mean, this thing just rusted out golly what are we gonna do Loose shots. Uh, yeah oh wait a minute we already lost it i know well so at least somebody brought us a carport yep okay oh hey i wonder what this is for is that like a why do you have a dangling nut underneath your truck tied to a piece of string? I don't know. News to me. Well, let's go see if we got a dry shaft. Okay. Hey, this, fellas and ladies, is why I tell you not to throw away your parts. And that one's sitting in the shed. So we're just going to knock a couple caps off of it, and off of the old one, and put on this one. I'm just not so sure about that weird-looking hand right there. So that's why we're just going to go ahead and... Get that POS out of the way, and we'll go with this one. So, yep, people, don't throw away your parts. I'm telling you. All right, so it's been a while since uh, we talked about short bed Fred. Well, I had some pretty bad luck with it. So, what happened for Christmas? My beautiful wife got me some uh, roller tip rocker arms for it. I put them on there; it didn't run right. So, uh, drove around a little bit trying to work out the problem. Wind up putting no rocker arms back on. Well, when I did. I tightened the, the number four rocker arm down and it's uh, when I and I adjust them the same way I always have. So as soon as it started making contact with the valve with the top of the valve, it started popping back through the air cleaner. So long story short, had a bad head or a bad valve in the head. So pulled the heads off, put another set of heads on. Went and bought what I considered was a nice set of heads to put on here. Well, put them on there. The daggum thing ran even worse. So what happened was, <laughs> during all my my switching and swapping, had also ate a cam lobe. So, you know, short bed head Fred had a pretty nasty little motor in it. Well, now, go ahead and show them what we did. I've been doing some swapping. This is that L98 out of the big truck, big white work truck. So, I took the motor out of my white truck, which is, this is an L98 vet motor out of an 85 vet. Um, you know, it's not no power machine. But it, it does a good job. But in that big truck, it just, it was happy, but not as happy as it could be. So we put it in here. Hey, you know what? I ain't heard it. You know what? I think the keys are laying over on Black Betty. Bam, blam. I'm going to fire it up for you. Let's hear it. She runs good. Just not as much power. I mean, honestly, it probably took, it's about half as powerful as, it, as what it was. But still fun, you know. That's that's why we do this stuff is to have fun. <laughs> Hang on, she's getting the keys. We'll fire it up for you real quick. See, this motor has at least 150,000 miles on it. Because the car I pulled it out of, it had a, it was showing like 140 when I got it. Well, see, she'll do. So this is where the vet motor is going to live for now until uh, until I fix that motor, which I'm probably going to go through that other engine. So we'll go show you what we've done to the big white truck.
I can cut it off. So, the big white truck, you know, I use that for hauling my my junk. I'll take you through John's junkyard back here. Yeah, floor pan. Mm -hmm. And don't y'all pay no attention to this. Y'all know I'm not LS swap guy, but this is going in my white truck. Let's see if y'all can... Yeah, this is gonna go with my daily driver. Can you see what that is? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That thing's probably that thing's dead than a I don't know what. Dead than might give a damn about work. <laughs> you can have it though. Alright, so we're gonna pull that six liter out and put my little white truck here sometime in summer. And the rest of it's gonna go for scrap. Old car trailer's been getting a workout because of hauling stuff like that suburban around. Would you mind to please pop the hood? It's already popped. It no is? Matter. Oh, yeah. I took the battery. All right, so this is my truck I use for hauling my trailer and parts and stuff. And it had that vet motor in there. Now, she's got a bone stock 350. I mean, just ain't nothing, ain't nothing built about this thing. It's just stock as they come. It's just a, actually what it is, it's a, O'Reilly's crate motor and when I got it um, I like things to be the same so this thing actually had mis mix matched heads it's got uh, had one 624 and some aftermarket Chinese head so I pulled the Chinese head off I had another 624 laying around so now it has correct matching heads and it pulls so much better than low RPMs that that old vet motor it just you know she liked to high rip them but this one I ain't gonna let that thing idle. You know, it's got five speed in it. That idle taking off with that big trailer behind it and all that stuff, and it does great. You don't mind bringing a key to it? It has no battery. Well, we can't do that. All right, so, y'all, I will take you back later and fire it up my Cheerios run. But so, we switched the motor out of this one, put it in the blue truck. This one's one I had sitting on the stand in a garage just for, it's just a spare. And now it's in here, living its happy life. And I'm still using this thing to haul stuff. And, and I know everybody's probably tired of listening to me talk, but so now we'll be using this to haul more junk and more projects. Well, we wouldn't put the battery back in it, so you can hear it fire up. Yeah, go ahead. A little cold nature because it ain't got a choke on it. No chokey chokey. Pull it. See, it just works. And uh, there's a couple y'all out there might know this engine is actually from the green turd. If y'all you know who you are, if you know, this is a green turd engine. So uh, I'm gonna show y'all something too. Well, actually, I'll show you next time I get it out and I'll work it. She holds about 50 pounds of oil pressure idling, and even working the heck out of it is still run about 190, and that's that's it. I never got it over 190 yet. I've been rough on it. All right, y'all. Well, I'm gonna all right, cut that thing off. All right, y'all. Well, I gotta get in house, eat me some dinner, and uh, I will be getting videos up more regularly now since uh, we got some good weather, and uh, I guess we'll we'll see y'all later.